Hello everyone. Once again, here we are. I'm going to be telling you about all of the new releases that will be available right now at the time that this video goes live. Just go to lotfp.com EU web store. It's all right there, ready for order right now. And I'm going to give you a bit more in-depth information and preview of the titles. But before we do that, I want to show you something. I want to make a point about LOTFP books. Here's uh, one of the books from the Disastrum set. And I'm just going to... Uh, let's see. The point I'm wanting to make is that the uh, LOTFP books are all very well constructed. You can hopefully see that there. We use stitch binding in pretty much every one of our hardcovers. I think the only one we didn't use stitch binding on is World of the Lost. And that's because of some technical issue of not being able to use the stitch binding because there's the uh, map pocket that's in that book. But yeah. We do good shit here. Anyway, um, <laughs> I would have loved to uh, crack the shrink wrap in front of you and get a fresh copy, but I would like to sell as many as possible, so it's my personal copy. I just did that too. You can do that with pretty much all LOTFP books. I don't know, uh, well, the, the soft covers that we've done are, aren't stitch bound, so I don't know how those hold up if you completely try to break the binding, but yeah, we... Uh, we do solid and beautiful shit, and let's get right into talking about the, the books. Uh, the Disastrum, that project goes back to Gen Con 2018. I was doing competition, is that the right word? I, I was doing a thing where I wanted people to come up and pitch me projects at, at the table at Gen Con. And whoever gave me the best pitch, I would sign to a contract right there at the convention. And, you know, people were pitching me things all weekend, and I settled on... Actually, I think there were two that I liked. The other one hadn't worked out, but uh, Disastrum was one of the projects, and... So what happened is the Sunday, last day of the convention, you know, I made the decision, I'm going to go with you. So I, uh, you know, shook his hand, took out $1,000 in cash, put it in his hand, then uh, picked up the contract, beckoned him to come, you know, into the booth, and then asked, so uh, what's your name? Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I think that story is basically, says everything about how, how LOTFP does business. And, uh, well, I like telling that story because it makes me sound insane. And insane in the absolute best way because, uh, six years later, <laughs> look what we have done. Look what we have done. A true relation of the Great Virginia Disaster of 1633. A three-volume set by Ezra Clavery. Um, and everything I'm about to talk about, uh, this, this is the fancy-ass slipcase edition that's got a bunch of components I'll show you. Uh, but this is also available as just the three books. The... Uh, slipcase edition is limited edition 300 copies uh, we won't be pushing this to retail offering this to retail and we won't be bringing this to any conventions if there are any left except Robocon that's just down the road otherwise you know so you got to order through the EU web store if you're wanting this limited edition beauty but let's talk about what it is and not just what its form is uh, the way I like to describe it, and have been describing it in a way that is both somewhat accurate and quite inaccurate, is Annihilation, the, the book in the movie, but Colonial Virginia. 
and that is accurate in that you know we've got the Jamestown colony and there's this alien extra dimensional stuff that's happening nearby it's inaccurate in that the nature of the thing is different in the disaster room versus what it is in annihilation so that's uh <laughs> That's my complicated, convoluted way of describing what it is. It's not an adventure, really. It's more of a campaign setting. Uh, kind of the way uh, some of our most popular books in the past have been. Carcosa is not an adventure. It's a setting. Red and Pleasant Land isn't an adventure. It's a setting. Veins of the Earth isn't an adventure. It's a setting. And, uh... <laughs> Here we go. And I, I I make that comparison not only in the form it takes, but in the quality. You know, I've I've been hearing a lot past few years that, that the golden age of LOTFP is behind us. The stuff you've been releasing isn't as good as the old days in the veins of the earth in a red and pleasant land. And this is disastrum here. This disastrum, well, if that's how you feel about what we've been releasing the past few years, well, that's your opinion. But uh, this disastrum's a great big fuck you in saying you don't get to say that shit anymore. <laughs> okay, this this is top class, state of the art shit in both content and presentation. And the three books in the set. Uh, volume one is Jamestown and its environs. Just basically, what what is the basic setting? What is what is the normal state of things in, in the areas that are not affected by the alien goings on? So it gives you a good good little grasp on the uh, on the setting as is. Volume two, Lo, New Lands. This is uh. Yeah, this is describing the uh, not-so-normal areas. This is the biggest book of the three. Uh, if I can remember, what is it? 96 pages, 128 pages, and 168? That'll be on the web store, the exact numbers, but somewhere in the category, that's how big these books are. Uh, but yeah, Volume 2, Low New Lands, is, you know, describing all the... all the weird alien... the adventure area. And then volume three is the prodigies, monsters, and an index for the whole damn thing. So we got that going on here. Uh, so we have that split into three books. And I want to give you a look at how some of this actually looks. Uh, hopefully uh, the lighting and the focus will... Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, it's very fine cloth binding, hot foil stamping. And that's uh, bookmark ribbons in all three volumes. Uh, the interiors, I'll give you a look at the interiors here. Uh, that's what we look like. And the artist, James Flowerdew. We were going because it's uh, early 17th century Virginia. We wanted something that was looked like a looked like woodcut art to be period appropriate but also be appropriately strange when it needed to be. And I don't know that I'm going to be... <laughs> I haven't prepared enough to, like, bookmark a specific picture I wanted you to see, but the... Oh, actually, I found it. Um, you know, so he does stuff that's reminiscent of but isn't exactly woodcut art. But, you know, then this is my absolute favorite picture. I should put that one on a T-shirt. You know, uh, James Flowerdew did over 100 pieces of art for the whole project. And, you know, same artist throughout the whole thing. And absolutely fucking magnificent. I mean, Ezra's a great writer. The premise is great. He establishes both the normal points and the weird areas of the setting. Yeah, this is... Uh, we took six years to do this, and originally we were wanting to put this out, uh, wanting to put it to press in October of last year, but we decided to put the brakes on and make sure we got the presentation and the production 
exactly right. And I've looked over things, everything seems to be absolutely perfect. Uh, and then if you get the slipcase edition, we do have some additional goodies. And again, we've got the uh, same cloth binding and the uh, foiling on the slipcase. And a lot of this was done by hand here in Finland. You know, we do not outsource to China or whatever. <laughs> you know, the, so... Maybe I should script these things, but now let's see. Again, we've got uh, also, um, you know, the slipcase edition does come with a referee screen. One side charts and tables, on the other side more of the same cloth and foil. Got two poster maps, uh, one for the player, one for the referee, and I'll show you the player one. It's uh, good size on those posters, uh, completely blank on the other side map so referee map and then two uh two sheets uh character sheets customized for the disaster room and expedition sheets to help you along there so this disaster room this is the biggest project we have ever done here at lamentations of the flame princess and this is really <sighs> <laughs> there's this I don't know I I don't I'm not a great salesman I can come up with gimmicks and jokes but at heart in presenting these things to you I want you to be surprised as much as possible and to get that first time joy when you're actually reading it and going oh 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 so all these little points that that I think are clever and that it's starting to rain, if you can hear that. <laughs> uh, you know, all these clever points that I can use to sell, sell, sell. Uh, I'll leave that to reviewers <laughs> to do, because I want you to be surprised, which I know isn't a great sales point for a, uh, you know, pricey, big, fancy set. But really, this is, this is... This is a good part of everything I want Lamentations of the Flame Princess to be. If, you know, and this, and I only say this to contrast it with what I'm going to talk about next. This one should be good for general audiences as well. Uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess has a reputation of being... It has a reputation that the most explicit stuff we do is some reason people think that's all we do. So, you know, I talked about in the last video, like with Black of Night, we also did things like Fecal Lands, we do Fuck for Satan, and so people think that's the kind of publisher we are. Well, here's our biggest project to date, and it's... it's... I don't want to say it's normal, because it's not normal, but it, it relies absolutely nothing on shock value, absolutely nothing on edginess. This is, this is just unsettling weirdness and top quality fun for the whole family. I mean, I told myself I wouldn't be sarcastic and be making jokes, but, you know, that, that this, this... I have it in my head that people are going to be quite surprised that Lamentations of the Flame Princess has invested so much into doing something, and it's like, where are the tits? Where are the intestines? Well, we'll get to that. But here, this is, uh... I, I just want to say, this is... This is everything. So if you thought that, uh, you know, things like the, the, the previous big sellers, like, again, Banes of the Earth, Red and Pleasant Land, Carcosa. This fits comfor comfortably beside them production-wise, quality-wise, being inventive, just being damn cool, and I'm starting to feel uncomfortable being a uh, shill like that, so we'll leave that. Uh, move on to the next thing. Um, now, 
Lamentations of the Flame Princess has a reputation for being edgy and, and just shocking and going for the shock value. And I have to say, while that's not everything we do, that is certainly some of what we do. Uh, this is Don't Fuck the Priest. This is uh, written by me. My first long-form project uh, for some years now. Yeah, and you know, after I got my part in the referee book done, I decided, okay, let's, let's uh, sit down and do something serious. And my idea of doing something serious, don't fuck the priest. And this is, uh, and we got a box, uh, one of these folding boxes. Uh, I couldn't, uh, the, 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 the actual physical box that we use, that we used for the uh, big terror on the streets box, was way too expensive and this this wasn't cheap to have manufactured but much less price but much lower price doing it in this format than uh you know than that format so that's why it's like this and this one also comes you know it'll come shrink wrapped i'm just using my personal copy to display to you uh inside we're gonna have a hardcover book which i'll show you in a moment uh we uh I'll show you the book in a moment, but it also comes with a deck of cards, 55 cards with uh, map elements on them. That'll be necessary for the adventure. And because I thought it was pretty lame to just have a box because we got a book and a deck of cards, I thought we need something else in there, so uh, dice. Two odd kind of formatted four-sided dice custom and those are very frequently used in the adventure and then the hardcover book uh, again this is one of these things this is the back cover didn't need to have anything on the back cover because put all that crap on the back of the box uh, we went fancy here with the uh, production I'm not gonna show you what's on the actual cover of the book that you can see because again I like leaving some of the surprise for the people that buy the things so just to let you know this is this is fancy and uh, let me show you uh, you know in the interior you know nice and uh, nice and text dense So yeah, this is uh, this is this is a dungeon crawl adventure, a dungeon crawl adventure where things are, I think, very innovatively innovatively done. That that this is not this is going to be a dungeon adventure like you have never seen, you have never played, and hot damn, am I going to be pissed if I find found out that fucking White Dwarf did this in 1982 or something? <laughs> That'd be my fucking luck. But as far as I can tell, the way the, uh, well, I'll spoil a bit. The, the dungeon is generated by the cards, but it is not simply a randomly dun generated dungeon. The, the, the randomness of the dungeon is actually something that's in setting. And how do I describe it? Basically, the, the dungeon itself doesn't exist until the players are in it and as the as the characters move through the dungeon the dungeon is constantly reforming itself around the characters and this this doesn't have any you know aside from the dungeon itself it doesn't assume any setting so you can use this with any campaign that you want to torture your players with and yeah that's uh and this is, well, it's called Don't Fuck the Priest. It's plenty nasty inside and out. And I really hope you enjoy it. So that's, uh, that's that. And let's see. Uh, next one we're going to talk about is, let's go uh, Lair of the Brain Eaters. This one's by DM Ritzlin. Uh, talked a little about him going over the Weird Crushers. Uh, Mr. Ritzlin, he is a sword and sorcery publisher and author, so, and I think this really has a strong, strong sword and sorcery character to it. Uh, we used Gonzalo again for, uh, we used Gonzalo for the interior art. Let me show you a 
good piece here. Uh, we last used him for uh, the Fermentum book, I do believe it was. Uh, this is a uh, you know, 32-page adventure, uh, good for a session, maybe two, depending on how slow your characters are. Uh, good sword and sorcery, you know, fla flavored thing. So, you know, nice, good, old-fashioned romp. They should fit well in, you know... Hell, this may fit better in other OSR campaigns than the strictly traditional Lamentations campaign, but hell with it, why not? And then, uh, Heart of the Saint by Elucard Finch, who did Big Puppet and Temple of the Worm for us. Uh, see, we went all out with the, uh, the foiling on the cover, and we did, uh... Five ink interior, where we've got, uh, you know, went, you know, usual four color. There's some, uh, I'm trying to show you. Again, I didn't, yeah, you can see we use uh, some color prompting for the text to help things stand out. And then we've, and then the artwork that's in here, that's done with silver ink. It's an additional spot color. This is, Sort of what we did with the Cursed Chateau in gold, while well, we're doing this in silver. And the adventure itself, it's basically a collection of mini-adventures uh, that, that can all be used together. Each of the adventures, you're basically trying to recover religious relics, with the relics being a body part of a saint. And what happens if you gather them all up? Well... Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I wish I, I wasn't able to position the camera so it could be looking over the table so I can't zoom out to just show you everything looking all neat. So I'll just, uh, hold this up like a dork, uh, just to say, oh, look, look, look. Um, but yeah, uh, we're releasing four different projects here, uh, by four different authors, four different tones, four completely different play experiences which that is the point of having a product line to me everything should feel a little bit different there there should be no unifying force to lamentations of the flame princess products other than they'll be hopefully inventive hopefully cool but you don't pick one up knowing what you're going to get you know if you're just going in blind we do a whole bunch of different stuff that is intentional that is why you know i i don't know how we could have released you know what what is it over a hundred titles at this point well that includes some reprints but how we could re you know release so many titles if they were all the same play experience over and over so we we've done absolutely everything we can both with the, the the crafting of the material and the content itself the presentation of it the production of it and again this is the different book and i'll abuse this one too and i wonder what would happen i wonder what would happen if you just decided to do this i mean I, i'm sure just about to say, well, what'll happen if you do this with all the other publishers' books? I'm sure most of them are fine and well-constructed, but I bet you'd also be quite unpleasantly surprised at a few of them about <laughs> what you can actually, how well they're actually physically con uh, constructed, but I haven't tested. I just worry about mine. Mine are fucking bricks, because... One of the things about the old school renaissance is you know the difference between the old AD&D hardcovers and how almost 50 years on those things haven't fallen apart. Those things were so well constructed that almost 50 years later they're all fully usable and serviceable. But you also remember Unearthed Arcana from 1985 that had pages falling out minutes after purchase and that's one of the reasons why when i started doing the hardcover books i started going with the sewn binding and making sure everything everything is very well constructed um 
So yeah, uh, next month from the time I'm recording this, where Lamentations of the Flame Princess is going to have its 15th anniversary. 15 years of living this madness. All the good things, all the bad things, all, all of the great triumphs, all of the enormous fuck-ups, all everything. And it, it hasn't been a normal life. Traveling around the world and meeting people. And, you know, this is, this is the kind of thing. This, this, yeah. Uh, we, uh, you know, this, this, this sort of thing. We, we've, uh put everything into this <laughs> and now it is up to you if, if you're excited by the new stuff I encourage you to buy it sooner than later and because the success of this literally it's it's like <laughs> now I'm just whining but you know I get to whine I put everything on the line I get to tell you about it you know, it's the kind of thing. If we don't sell enough, then we're done. But that's any business. But, uh, and then, but if we do sell, you know, I would love to be doing this for you for another 15 years with maybe a little more triumphs and a little less fuck-ups. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff that's in the works that's on hold right now because everything's gone into the new stuff. And I'll remind you, uh, our last video was all about the Weird Crushers. The, the free stuff that you'll get when you order, because I realize this stuff's going to be expensive, and international shipping's a fucking nightmare. Uh, yeah. So basically, if you order from the EU web store, uh, we've got five new Weird Crushers, five new mini-adventures and supplements that you'll get free with orders. For every item you buy, you know, buy one thing, you get one Weird Crusher. Buy two things, you get two different Weird Crushers. But if you buy four or more things, you get five different free Weird Crushers just thrown in with your order. Uh, this is only through the EU web store, not through the US web store, which should be back up and running in the next week or two. Uh, I'm going to be concentrating on fulfilling these orders. Uh, and if you're watching this video a month from now, everything should be open and ready, and yeah, uh, so yeah, you get the Weird Crushers if you order through the EU web store, the, uh, fancy-ass slipcase edition of Disastrum, available only through the EU web store, won't be going to the US web store, and won't be going to retail, won't be, uh, coming to the conventions, um, yeah, and, um, now I'll be working with the authors to come up with uh, little promo bits for their things. You'd think I would have done this ahead of time, but the reason this stuff's been released now instead of before the recent conventions is because some stuff... Uh, spoilers. My thing, because I can't do anything on fucking time. Took us almost all the way up to the... You know, to the conventions, then I did the conventions, and then I've been preparing for this, and then loading the stuff in, turning my living room slash office into now just warehouse. Uh, yeah. But with these four releases, we have done absolutely the best we are capable of doing. If you don't find anything here, between, oh, let's do this, between... Disastrum, Don't Fuck the Priest, Heart of the Saint, and Lair of the Brain Eaters. If there's not anything here that doesn't absolutely fucking delight you, that doesn't make your brain just go off, then we got nothing more for you anyway. This is, this is, this is the best we can do. This is the best that can be done. Hopefully tomorrow, the, with the, you know, figuratively tomorrow, with the next stuff that's in the works. Hopefully I'll get to say the same thing, that this is the best. This is the best we can do. But, uh, yeah. <sighs> I'm all, had to go all in to get things done this way. And now, it's up to you to tell me. Whether all that was a very, very good idea or the dumbest fucking idea ever. I have a feeling 
it's not going to end up in a middle ground. So, uh... Ah, not the slip case. I'll show you the books. This has been my life. Well, and this one, honestly. You know, this has been my life for most of the past year, getting these things put together. And the entire course of the rest of my life. All depends on the reception. So... I've now put my life in your hands, and I actually have full confidence that if you trust me on these matters... <laughs> I sound like an idiot. I sound like a maniac now, but really. If you trust me when I say this, that, that if you invest in these things, invest whether as a collector, or if you're going to use these things to fucking play with, which, you know, is the ultimate point, you will not be disappointed. You will be absolutely fucking delighted. And I've literally put my life on the line for, for that. So I've done the best I can on my end. I put my trust in you that that will be enough. Um, yeah. Go buy all this shit, please. <laughs> and then tell everyone how fucking awesome it is. Talk to you later.